Hi, this is Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook, and in this video, we're going to be talking all about Microsoft Teams video meetings, which are so nice to be able to use whenever you and your students aren't in the same physical location because you get to see each other's faces and hear each other's voices and you get to interact. It's not quite the same as being in the same place face to face, but it's sometimes a, a nice alternative. And so in this video, we'll talk about some of the basics that you'll see in Microsoft Teams video meetings, as well as some ways to use them other than maybe what you would have expected. So let's take a look first and how you can get that video meeting started. So within any channel in Microsoft Teams, you have this little button up at the top that looks like a camera. And if you click on it, you can choose between meet now and schedule a meeting. That's definitely one way that you can do it. And so once you start to schedule a meeting, there are a variety of different things that you can add to it. For instance, you can add who's uh, going to come, like whose attendance is required or optional. You can choose when the meeting starts or ends if you want to. You can choose the team and the channel where it's created. And then of course you can add all of the details of the event. And there's a rich text editor there that will let it look, you know, just like you're editing a document. Um, up at the top, there's even a scheduling assistant. So if you're scheduling something with coworkers who have their calendars set up, then you're able to see a time that works for everyone. And then you can also have a response and request a response from the attendees and allow forwarding and all of that. Now, whether you're starting the meeting right away or if you're scheduling it, right before you jump in, you've got this one screen and you've got a variety of different things you can do. In some cases, you can actually edit the name of the meeting right up at the top. You can toggle your webcam or microphone on or off. So if you want to enter and you don't want to disturb, then you can always turn those off. You can also pick a virtual background if you want to. So this is where you can blur your background or you can pick a picture to put in the back of it. You can adjust your webcam and your microphone settings if you have different ones that you want to use. And then you can even just enter with the audio off just to make sure that, again, that you don't disturb people that are already there. Sometimes you're able to join by phone, and this can be nice for students who might not have internet access who could join by phone uh, instead to be able to save um, on internet data. And then there's also select a room. That means if you have, you know, a room in your building or your facility, this is different from trying to do a breakout room. Now, once you're into the meeting, you've got a variety of different things that you can choose from. So you'll notice up at the top here, um, you are able to view all of your attendees by clicking on this one little button here, um, number one. And if you need to mute mics, which is a thing that sometimes we need to do, that's the place where that lives. You can view the conversation or the chat if you want to, uh, so that you can interact with the people in your meeting. Uh, raising your hand is an option. And then again, more along the top, you can toggle your webcam on and off. You can share your screen. And then you can even flip to a different webcam if you need to. That's way down at the very bottom in the corner. And then finally, you can leave the meeting. Now there are uh, those options that are in the menu button. That's the little three dots. And so you've got a bunch of different things that you can choose from there. The device settings let you adjust your microphone and webcam and speakers. You can create meeting notes, create a document that anyone can add to if you want to. Um, you've got the meeting details as well. So that's where you can see all of the different details of your specific meeting. You can choose how you view others, including gallery. You can do a large gallery with lots of people in it. And then you've even got together mode where it makes it look like everybody's in the same room. You can turn on a virtual background by clicking apply background effects. Again, that's where we were saying you can put a picture in the background or you can blur your background. You can even turn on live closed captions so that you can read what's being said right along with hearing it. Uh, start a recording. If this is an option that's available to you, this is where you're able to record your meeting. And then finally, down at the bottom, turn off incoming video. This is for all of the participants in your meeting. If you don't want their cameras on, then that's one way to be able to turn those off. So what are some of the different ways we can use video meetings? There's a variety. Uh, for instance, we can, of course, do a full 
a class video meeting where everybody's all together in the same place. And again, with the together mode, it can make it look like we're all in the same room, which can be a lot of fun. One thing that I've noticed whenever I have a big gallery view where there are lots of thumbnails or together mode, it can be kind of distracting if I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to pay attention to what I say whenever there are all of those. Now, whole group instruction isn't the only way that you can use video meetings. You can go and meet with small groups of students, which can actually be really nice. You know, if you have a group of you know, say 24 students, you might do six small groups of four instead of just doing one meeting with everyone. Or you could do the meeting with everyone and then have small groups as well, because we know that the dynamics within a small group are different. So we might be able to accomplish different things better. How about a virtual guest or a virtual field trip? If you're able to uh, share your meeting with other people, you could invite someone else uh, to join you, or you could even go on a virtual field trip. There are lots of options for that that you can sign up for at skypeintheclassroom.com. It's a huge database of virtual field trips and virtual guest speakers you can choose from. And then there's even office hours. You can just start a meeting at a scheduled time and students can pop in and pop out if they have questions or if they want to meet with you. Now, once you're in that meeting, how do we keep things kind of on track? Uh, Because it's easy to be distracted and it's easy to feel like there's a little bit of chaos in these meetings. And, you know, honestly, there is going to be chaos. It's just it's going to happen. But uh, there's some things that we can do to try to mitigate that a little bit and get everybody on task. And so, for instance, uh, numbers one and two in this graphic we've got for you have to do with uh, checking in at the beginning of a meeting. You know, check in with the teacher whenever you get there, gather any materials that you need, uh, maybe let everybody know that you're there through the chat. And again, the chat, it doesn't have to be the enemy. You know, I think sometimes teachers look at the chat and they're like, oh man, I just want to disable this. But it can be a really important part of your class where students are able to interact without having to use their voices. Um, Students may want to stay engaged. Um, I know whenever I'm talking, if I see people that are nodding and looking at the camera, that's always encouraging. Um, The mute your microphone thing. This is a big one to encourage students to mute their microphone if they're not speaking or uh, some teachers will let them keep their microphones on and just try to be in a quiet space so that if they need to interject something immediately, they're able to do it. The chat is a great place to be able to share ideas and questions and you can of course raise your hand too by clicking on that little button uh, so that students know that... uh, or sorry, so the teacher knows that the student wants to talk. And then, of course, it's important to wait on whoever's in charge of the call to be able to call on you. Um, And again, it sort of depends on the teacher. I know some teachers that won't call on students and that they'll let them kind of speak up whenever they have a question. Taking notes on a document or a piece of paper can be good. And then there's also the idea of eye contact. If uh, students are supposed to keep eye contact, one easy way to do that is to look right into wherever the webcam is. With some cultures, you know, having eye contact with an adult or with an authority figure is uh, not a respectful thing. So you want to keep that in mind. But if eye contact is an important part of the oral communication process, then looking right at that webcam can be pretty important. So there you go. There's a quick tour of video meetings in Microsoft Teams. Lots of things you can do with this and hopefully you feel a little more confident to use this with your students in your class.